Okay, so welcome to this next video in which we are discussing the Orbit Stabilizer Theorem. Okay, so in the previous video we discussed orbits, now what we're going to do is discuss stabilizers, do a bit of an introduction to stabilizers, and then we'll put the two together to arrive at the Orbit Stabilizer Theorem, which talks about a correspondence between the elements of an orbit and the left cosets of a stabilizer. Okay, so, uh, let's start then with the definition of a stabilizer of A in the group G. Okay, now, an orbit of an element little a was a subset of the uh, set capital A. What we're going to see is that the stabilizer of an element little a from the set capital A is actually a subset, in fact it's more than a subset, it's a subgroup of the group capital G. Okay, so once again, what you need to do is you need to select some little a uh, from the set capital A. So pick your favourite little a from the set capital A. And what we're now going to construct is what's called the stabiliser of a in the group capital G. And it's written like so. You write capital G for your group, and then you put subscript little a. Okay, and this is read as the stabiliser, okay, of the element little a, so I'll just put stabiliser of little a, in the group capital G. So we'd read that the stabiliser of a in G. Okay, and I will highlight this up in turquoise. Okay, right, so what then is the definition of the stabiliser of a in G? And I should just stress that uh, this notation that we're using for orbits and stabilizers, uh, this is pretty common notation, but there are other notations. Okay, some people actually go full out and sort of have orb for orbit and stab for stabilizer. Okay, I think this is a nice sort of quick, subtle notation. Okay, but be aware that there are lots of other notations that people use for orbits and stabilizers. Okay, right. Uh, so, stabilizer of A and G. What then is the definition of the stabilizer of A and G? So, this is going to be a subset of elements of the group capital G. Okay, so in fact, it's going to be all the elements of the group capital G. So, all little g from the group capital G, such that when little g acts on the element little a, it sends it to little a. Okay, so now you might be able to see why this is actually called the stabilizer of the element little a in the group capital G. Okay, this is effectively the subset of the group capital G of elements of that group capital G, which when they act on this element little a from the set capital A, send it onto itself. Okay, so going back to our picture of the group action composition table here, we know that all of the elements of the group uh, they will act on this element little a to send it onto some other element of the set capital A. Okay, we are now looking for the subset of elements of the group, which when they act on this element little a, they send it onto itself. Now note, that does not mean that they send every element of the set capital A onto itself. They're not all being associated with the identity permutation necessarily, it just means that they send this particular element little a onto itself. So the set permutation that these elements of this stabilizer of A and G uh, are associated with uh, are set permutations that fix the element little a, but they don't necessarily fix all the other elements of the set. Okay, uh, so note that important point. Okay, so uh, what I now want to prove is that this is actually a subgroup of the group capital G. Okay, so it's more than a subset, it is in fact a subgroup. So I want to prove that the stabilizer of A and G is always a subgroup of capital G, no matter what little a you actually use. Okay, so you can pick any element of the set you like to do this with, it will always give you a subgroup of the group capital G. Okay, so it, it is a subset of capital G, and to show that a subset of capital G is a subgroup, we need to prove that with the inherited composition law that it has from the group capital G, that it obeys the axioms of group theory, that it's a group in its own right, basically. Okay, so remember, we need to check the four axioms of group theory, but we don't need to bother with the second one, because uh, we know that 
instantly when you have one of these inherited composition laws, it has to obey associativity, otherwise the larger composition law on the group capital G wouldn't obey associativity. So we don't need to worry about axiom number two of group theory, but we do need to check one, three, and four. Okay, so first the axiom number one is very, very important in subgroups. This is closure. Okay, so it needs to be the case that if you compose any two elements from the stabilizer of A and G together, that you get another element in the stabilizer of A and G. Okay, so let's pick two elements, let's say little g1 and little g2, which are from the stabilizer of A and G. Okay, so pick two arbitrary elements from this stabilizer of A and G. What I now want to prove is, um, and I should put probably up uh, for all, so whatever little g1 and little g2 you pick from the stabilizer of A and G, I want to prove that if we take g1 composed with g2, it's also an element of the stabilizer of A and G. Okay, so this is to show. So this is what I need to show in order to show that it's closed. So if you take any two elements from uh, the stabilizer of A and G and compose them together, you end up with another element in the stabilizer of A and G. Okay, so let's do this then. So, firstly, let's just turn this into another condition. What is the condition for G1 composed with G2 to actually be an element of the stabilizer of A and G? Well, the condition is that G1 composed with G2 dot a must equal little a. Okay, so saying this, saying that g1 composed with g2 is an element of the stabilizer of a and g is utterly equivalent to saying that g1 composed with g2 dot a must equal little a back again. Okay, that and that are synonymous. Okay, Be, uh, having this obeyed is exactly the definition that you need to satisfy in order to be in this. Okay, so if we want to show this, we need to show this. Okay, so let's now try and show this then. How are we going to show this? Well, we're going to use this first axiom of group actions. We're going to split this G1 composed with G2 dot A down into G1 dot G2 dot A. Okay, and we now want to show that this is equal to A. Okay, so I should stress that this was to show. We didn't know that this was true. Okay, so we had to show this. So we're now considering what is G1, G2 dot A, and we can rewrite it as G1 dot G2 dot A in this way. Now, how are we going to evaluate this then? Well, we go back to our initial condition. G1 and G2 were both elements of the stabilizer of A and G. So what does that tell us instantly about what G2 dot A is equal to? It tells us that it's equal to little a because g2 was an element of the stabilizer of a and g. Okay, so when it acts on little a, it sends little a onto itself. Okay, so the answer to g2 dot little a is just little a. And then what we're asking is what is g1 dot little a? And the same thing tr is true here. Little g1 is an element of the stabilizer of a and g. So when it acts on little a, it's also going to be equal to little a. So that now shows us that g1 composed with g2 dot a is actually equal to little a, which is exactly what we needed to show that g uh, to show that G1 composed with G2 is an element of the stabilizer of A and G, providing that G1 and G2 are elements of the stabilizer of A and G. Okay, so that's worked perfectly. We now have that this is closed under composition, so that's good. It obeys axiom number one. As I'll say, as I said, we um, don't need to bother with axiom number two of group theory, so we won't bother with that. Okay, so we do now need to check axiom number three of group theory, which is that the identity element uh, from our group capital G is in our subset uh, of the stabilizer of A and G. Well, that's really easy, because what do we know? Well, we know by axiom number two of group actions that the identity element dot A is equal to little a, no matter what little a you pick from the set capital A. So it doesn't actually matter what little a you were using there. Uh, the identity fixes absolutely all of them. It is truly associated with the identity permutation of the set capital A. Okay, so it will certainly fix your favorite little a that you picked up here. Okay, so the identity is always an element of the stabilizer of a and g, no matter what little a you are working with. Okay, so that's good. So axiom number three is obeyed there, and that will be our group, uh, our identity element of our subgroup. And now axiom number four, 
Okay, and this one's a little bit more tricky, but still very, very easy. Okay, so axiom number four, we need to check that if you have an element of the stabilizer of A and G, so if we take a little g which is in the stabilizer of A and G, what we want to show, and again I'll put to show, we want to show that the inverse element, which we'll know, we know will be in the group capital G, so we know the inverse element is an element of the group capital G, what we don't know is that it's an element of the stabilizer of A and G, we want to show that G inverse is also going to be an element of the stabilizer of A and G, and that will mean that all of the elements of the stabilizer of A and G will actually have inverses. Okay, right. So, again, we will just change this um, into what it actually means. This means that we need to show that g inverse dot a is equal to a. So this is what we need to show to show that g inverse is an element of the stabilizer of a and g. So how are we going to do that? Well, what do we have? We know that g is an element of the stabilizer of a and g, which means that g dot this element, little a, is equal to little a. Okay. So this is the great idea. What we can do is we can substitute in for little a here, g dot a, because little a is equal to g dot a. Read this equation the other way round. Little a is equal to g dot little a for that particular little a that you picked right at the start to consider the stabilizer of. Okay, uh, so what I can now do is stick this into here and then I get that g inverse dot a is equal to g inverse dot g dot a. I'm perfectly at liberty to do that. That works perfectly fine. Okay, but now what can I do? Well, this is of course why this is an ingenious thing to do, a clever trick. Okay, uh, what I can now do is I can use the first action, sorry, the first axiom of group actions to rewrite this as g inverse composed with g, okay, dot a. Okay, but now, and now I know exactly what g inverse composed with g is equal to, that will equal the identity element of my group, so this is just equal to the identity dot a, and the identity dot a will absolutely be a, no matter what little a we're talking about. Okay, so it will certainly be true for this uh, fixed little a that we picked at the start. So that now proves that g inverse dot a will equal little a if g is an element of the stabilizer of a and g. Okay, so that now proves that you will have inverse elements in this stabilizer of A in G. Okay, so what we've now proven then is that the stabilizer of A in G for some fixed little a is an element of the set capital A will in fact be a subgroup of our group capital G. Okay, I think we'll have another break here and in the next video what we'll then go on to do is prove the orbit stabilizer theorem. We've now done our introduction to orbits and stabilizers and now what we'll do is we'll actually uh, have a look at the relationship between them, uh, which is the orbit stabilizer theorem.